Hi, this is Kai. So this is the video to show you how I managed to do horizontal calibration to get it to work uh, any, every time. The horizontal calibration, what it does is that it actually will move the telescope to three different spots along an arc to kind of use the stars in those three spots to orient itself to know exactly where it is so then when you ask it to go to a target then you know how to move them so some of the prerequisites to get this to work is, first, you want to make sure there's a clear sky that you can image. You don't need the whole sky, but you just need a an area that, as it go as the telescope moves to see three spots, it can see the stars and no clouds and and no lights obstructions or things like that. All right, that's the first requirement: clear sky. Second, is that this telescope you should um, calibrate the compass to make sure it kind of roughly know where north, the direction where it's pointing. So make sure you, you calibrate the compass. I've noticed that the compass uh, go out of whack once in a while. It's probably because um, there may be metal parts or some magnetic things that interfere with magnets the sensors inside the, the unit. So to be safe, I would just, uh, at the beginning of the session, just calibrate the compass. Now, manually slew the, the scope to the center of that clear spot. I would do it manually. First, you need to raise the arm anyway. So when you do that, go and raise it to the middle of that clear sky that you have. Okay. After that, you want to focus your lens. You focus your 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 optical train. So click the click the auto focus in the stargazing mode. That way, when it's trying to find the stars, you get pinpoint stars. So it's very it's easier for the for the unit to locate itself. And of course, it the the unit should be relatively level. You don't need to actually do the level calibration or anything like that. Just make sure it's on a level, relative level ground. And so this is one of the key points now, is you want to use the um, star atlas in the stargazing mode to tell it to go to a target that's i think it's actually a bug in the, in the software in that since you already pointed the telescope at this open spot it should know where you are and i think when you go to atlas just make sure it, it's in the right tough rough orientation or roughly north or south or or things like that Sometimes I get confused. Uh, again, sometimes the compass is all, all kind of messed up in terms of calibration. Um, so when you open up the atlas, you should um, kind of confirm that the telescope is pointing roughly where it is. Um, and then what I would do in that case is click on the on that object in the middle, you can pick a star. And in this case, I, I, I use the star Capella because it's pretty bright. Again, um, based on the, uh, what season you are in, in, in the year, there are different stars and also, also depends on what clear skies you have. Vega, uh, any prominent stars. So for this session, I use Capella. And then, so you should be able to see Capella in that star atlas. 
when you open it up. What I would do in that case is I would go ahead and tell the unit to go to that star. That's very important in that in this calibration, in this horizontal calibration, when it finished, it would try to go back to the last object that you want to go. So if, if you don't choose an object, it is just kind of randomly go to what I thought it's going to go. It's it's going to be all random. So that's I think is a bug in the in the S in the star C C star in this current version. So do make sure you pick the a a object and tell it to go there. And once it go there, then this is where this video starts. Now, the last step is, it now is going to actually do the horizontal calibration. That happens when you actually tell it to start capturing and enhancing. So this is the sequence that goes when it, it, it starts um, start the enhancement. Because it's the very first object of this session, it will try to do the horizontal calibration. And in this sequence, you would see the scope will try to will turn its base in three different points. Okay, here I'll show you. So now it's it's in the middle of cal in calibration. So you notice it's going to slew. It's going to rotate to the left of that object. That's the first point. That's in the 40, 40%. Okay. So it's trying to do uh, plate solving. Now it's done. Now it's going to the second point, which is the object that you had picked. That's the middle of the clear sky. It's doing again the plate solving. Now it's done now. It's now it's going to the third point. So you see left center right it's rotating rotating the dates so once it's placed all three now it has that model so now it's going to rotate back to the center object this is the key is that you have to tell what the object you were looking for so it it's go to the point you want so in so you see it's in the final step See, it's finished the calibration. Now it, what it's doing is that what it's called is preparing for enhancement. What it's really doing in this case is that it's picking a series of dark frames. It's, it's, it's way to kind of calibrate the sensor to figure out the response of the sensor um, when, it's, uh, when you uh, kind of covered the lens. It covered the lens internally. And it takes 60 seconds. And in our terminology, it's, actually, it's called dark frame calibration. But they, CW, call it something they don't, they don't term. Anyway, and it's almost done. So now the scope is in the right orientation and pointing to the object that you told it to go to before. It again has finished the horizontal calibration and it did the dark frame calibration, which so now it's ready to do enhancement. It's, so it will do as long as enhancement as you want. And this sequence. It's only applicable on the very first object of the night session. That's that's when you actually turn on your C star and talk to the first object. All these uh, these um, extra step will not happen again 
and you want to go to the next object in the same session, and that's an overhead night. If you, of course, if you turn off your C star and start all over again, to it, it means a new session, so the, the things all it will start all over again. So the key thing is, the, the key takeaway is, make sure you have a clear sky, an, a clear sky area where, where the telescope rotate for those three points, it can find stars and it's not obstructed. And there's no bright light shining to it. And of course, you don't want a moon right in those three spots because the moon will wash all the stars. Okay. Second is that you need to make sure to tell the C star what object you want to image. That's where that, that step where you have to tell it to go. You have to tell it to go to that object and through that star atlas, not just through the manual joystick control. That really is a bug that ZW should fix. Okay, if you follow all these steps, I guarantee you, or well, I mean, there may be other stuff, but in my experience, this will always work for me. And I hope this clarified how you can get CSR, um, get started on your on your night session, and help orient the the unit to the next guy. All right, that's it. Have fun with CSR. Bye for now.